What is going on today guys? We are back for another episode in Darkness Falls. Now this is the off-camera one and I'm going to go through and do a little bit of explaining in this video instead of doing like a looting episode or a Horde Night video. Um, coming up very soon though, before we get started, uh, Horde Night is coming up very soon. So as you guys can see, it is almost rolling over to Horde Day itself. Um, and then after Horde, we are going to be going to the Wasteland and hitting up the Research Lab. So, um, that should be coming out, well, Horde Night video will be coming out very soon after, after this one. And then the Research Lab, you know, almost immediately after that as well. So, there's two Research Labs for the, uh, for the special military bunkers. So, that should be pretty cool. We got ourselves this lovely little M60 here. For those of you wondering how I mod my gun, um, this is basically my setup for my guns with the exception of the basic mag extender mod. Uh, it will get swapped out for an advanced extended mod. So anyway, we have an advanced brass catcher. We have the rad remover. This will become the advanced mag extender mod. Um, a foregrip, barrel extender, bipod mod, and blessed metal. So seven mods um 163 damage it eventually will have 120 round capacity so this is how i mod my gun um now it is a bit different for the ar i don't currently have a uh, another receiver to make a better one but i would basically swap out um either the bipod mod or the foregrip mod for a reflex sight or a 2x on that. So that's basically how I uh, mod my guns. Now the mining tools here, as you can see we have both of them are grade 71 titanium and they have the exact same setup here. So you got the large uh, tank mod, grave digger, wood splitter, bunker buster, diamond blade, uh, iron breaker and the weighted head mod now it's the same for the other one uh, just in different order of course but and the reason for adding the extra mods in like the ones you would normally just use in the like on an auger or shovel or a pick is because it gives a little bit extra damage um, but as you can see durability is 48,000 um, fuel capacity is 800 on there and a thousand on here so Basically, these are as good as these will get. Um, I have a bunch of stuff on me to go work on the horde base and stuff, by the way. Uh, but anyway, so that's how I set up my guns and my mining tools. Now, the spear, the spear is just kind of, I just kind of put whatever on it and it's good enough. Um, I don't really use the spear too much now, especially since this update, the zombies are, are nuts. Uh, they really are. But anyway, ammo-wise, I love to run AP762 for my M60, and I run hollow points for my AR. And the reason for this is soft targets hollow points work great on, and with the M60, you can shoot through one target and hit the one behind it with the AP rounds, and it's got such a great rate of fire in a big magazine. The AP rounds just are absolutely incredible. Um, so that's what I like to do. Now I'm going to explain a little bit about how the bullet crafting has changed. So as you can see, there are different tips here. You have hollow point tips, you have armor piercing tips, you have the regular tips, and then of course you have the buckshot. Now everything is stacks of 1,000 as you can see, so they up the stacks of that. Stacks of paper are now 500 instead as well. So big difference there on how you craft the stuff. It's still It only takes one tip, so I'll actually grab a couple... Uh, stacks out here and we'll show you guys a little bit of the crafting um, here as well so come right here and now for regular ammo it takes one of each for these so we're just gonna pop you know thousand in there and those will run and make themselves up now we'll come to the hollow points and again one one tip one gunpowder one casing now, AP takes more than one, um, more than one gunpowder, but everything else is one, the tip and the casing. So as you can see, it's, well, with the exception of 9 mil. 9 mil is always one, um, 7.62 is three, and 
Magnum ammo is three as well. So, as you can see, the difference here: um, three thousand gunpowder versus one. Now, the reason I'm making the regular 9mm is for my turrets, uh, but that's the difference with ammo. That's the that's how we changed up how ammo is made. Um, shotgun is basically, you know, relatively similar here. So, shotgun does take two gunpowder though, um, not one. But as you can see, we can pop a a wave of 500 in there as well, and that is how that's how ammo goes now with with the changes as far as like tips and stuff. Now slugs slugs are if I remember right slugs are still with polymer. So yep, it takes three tips, two gunpowder, and one poly polymer to make a slug. Now breaching slugs are a completely different thing in itself. Uh, you, you, uh, excuse me, you need steel, clay, gunpowder, and polymer to make those. Now, breaching slugs are are used for like busting through doorways. It's basically, um, it's basically for busting into blocks, is what it is more or less. So, anyway, show you our forge setup here. Now, this forge here is is only for use or making insulators, uh, forged iron, and um, where is it here? Um, crap, I can't remember what it, what the other piece was that I was making out of this. But anyway, uh, you need a tool and die set to make the, the uh, insulators. Insulators are used to make electrical components. So, when it comes time to do that, later in the game you'll need to make electrical components for, like, coil batteries for the coil gun. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into making that. So, let's take a look here at the coil battery. So the coil battery requires five electrical parts, ten polymer, and five lead per battery. Now each round takes one battery. So as you can see polymer and electrical parts become a much needed thing later on. Now electrical parts are not that hard to make. They are a bit expensive. Um, whoops, if I could type it right. So electrical parts require one insulator, one one forged iron and one duct tape. So they are a bit expensive to make, but you know, once you get to crafting coil guns, um, it's well worth it. The coil guns are absolutely devastating. Not as good as the laser weapons, but laser weapons come later in the game. Depending on how fast you play, it could take you quite a while to get to them. Um, I'll probably be the laser weapons before the Day 21 horde, though, um, because well, level 82 already and just smoking along here. As you can see, we've got a full set of titanium armor, grade 71 as well. Um, and it's pretty much, it's modded out pretty good. I haven't spent time on like cooling and insulated mesh and connectors and stuff like that. It's just what I had, but um, basically got everything that I want as far as the mods go. And eventually I'll get to get to doing more of them later. But anyway, uh, in order to make polymer, polymer requires you to have cornmeal and water. Now, either one you either one you make it on, so whether it's in the campfire in the cooking pot or you make it on the chem station, it requires the same stuff. So, cornmeal and water. Now, in order to make cornmeal, um there it is. You need corn. So, again, regardless how you make it, whether it's the mortar and pestle, or you just do it from your inventory, uh, it still requires one ear of corn. So, that brings me to the next part here, which is going to be my garden area. Now, if you're wondering why this is has concrete walls on it, damn screamers come in and were wrecking my garden. As you can see, they tore a big chunk of it out, and yeah, it was it was a mess. Um, Screamer come in and she tore out one block and started digging down and then the one she screamed in tore a bunch more out so I decided to put walling up around here but anyway as you can see we got ourselves quite a bit of a garden going on this is mainly like drink stuff here 
or rather it's all drink stuff. So I've got a whole bunch of chrysanthemum, we've got some yucca and some goldenrod. I'm going to fill the rest of this in with yucca and probably actually get rid of some of this chrysanthemum. I just had all, this, all the seeds and wanted to get a bunch of chrysanthemum for red tea right away. But anyway, we next have aloe vera. We have wheat. We're making flour. As you can see, the difference here, this one is growing, and these are still seeds. The stuff on here grows at a really oddball-ass way. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason to how it grows. Uh, I planted all this corn at the same time. Some of it's seed, some of it's growing, some of it I've already harvested. It just grows at a really stupid, goofy rate. Um, I have blueberries for making blueberry pie right now because that's currently one of the best things I can make. Um, as well as later on we'll get into making uh, you could juice smoothie, I believe is what it's called. Um, so anyway, my garden is going to be expanding quite a bit, but corn and aloe vera are two of the two of the big things I I want in my garden. Uh, aloe vera for making first aid bandages, corn for making cornmeal to make our polymer. So that's the explanation on the garden. Uh, I'll get into it more in detail as we do it in our normal series. Uh, this here is uh, oil pump. All right, so as you can see, this is just for making oil shale. That is it. Um, it doesn't work how I would have expected it to. I would have expected you to place it in the desert and it would have like worked kind of like an oil derrick and pulled the oil out of the ground. But instead, you put wood into it and it turns it into one oil shale. Coal, or you can put a fuel log in there. Now, obviously it's got different costs. Wood cost a bit more to make one. Coal, quite a bit less. And fuel logs, the same as oil shale. Now, if you do not want to use wood, coal is very easy to mine. Wood is simple to mine too. But fuel logs, take two wood and one bowl of sap. Now, uh, sap brings me to a to a whole nother thing here. So we'll go in and we'll grab some bowls. I have absolutely tons of them made up. Because um, I need, we're going to need a lot of glue for the duct tape for the electrical parts. And I'm basically getting my whole setup ready for the, for the long run here. Um, where is my motorcycle at? Where did I, did I lose my motorcycle or something here? Where? Okay. Map's a little bit messed up too. I've noticed that uh, as I play, sometimes it like, as you can see, it gets really bright like this, and then you'll load it back up, and it comes back. So I don't know what what the deal with that is, to be honest. But I guess it kind of it is what it is. Um, I have no idea where my motorcycle went. So I guess we'll just hop on the mini bike for now. Um, now, to get sap from the trees, it's very simple. Uh, you just come over to a tree, any tree you want, basically, as long as it's a full-size tree. Uh, you can't do it on, like, this orange tree here, I don't think. But as you can see, nothing happens here. Uh, but you come up to the tree, and you just left-click on it, and you'll see it fills it up with sap. So, yeah, you can use it as uh, as a drink. I don't know why you'd really want to. Um, it doesn't seem to do enough to make it worthwhile. But anyway, you just keep swapping in and out your bowls. Uh, these The bowls of sap can be used for for a bunch of different things. Uh, fuel logs, turn it into glue. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different uses. You can use the bowls for water as well. So it's not just one thing really like to know what happened to my motorcycle though it just kind of disappeared and I don't see it on the map anywhere either it was parked right here but anyway that's that's for a different time um, so with this sap as you can see shut that off so that's not so loud 
It takes two sap to make one glue. Now, when you use the sap to make the glue, it, it eliminates the bowl. Um, so we'll make ten, and I hear somebody beating. It's a screamer. Oh, no, it's not. thought it was a screamer. Whoops. Bad shooting. Make sure nobody else is around. Alright. So anyway, we got ourselves our snare traps and the one chicken coop from the quest there. Um, grab this up quick. So anyway, sap has a whole bunch of different uses like that. Uh, you can actually take a look at everything you can use it for here. So Mega Crushes uh, is like... I'll call it like basically it's the best drink in the game. Uh, so as you can see, it takes one bowl of sap, six apples, six bananas, six coconuts, and six blueberries. So it costs a lot to make, but it's basically the best in the game. I mean, as far as as far as I'm concerned, it's basically the best thing you can make in the game. Close to the, I would say probably the you could use smoothie. But anyway, you can also make apples, the sticky apples with them, uh, sterile bandages, which are like the interim between first aid bandages and regular bandages to use. Uh, the fuel logs, and of course, glue. So, sap has a bunch of different uses for it. Um, so, like I said, there's always always uses for for getting stuff like that. Uh, they're very easy to make. If I don't even think you need, like, you don't even need, like, the anvil, the advanced bellows, the tool and die set, or a crucible to make it. You just, if you have clay in your forge, you can pop them out. They cost 18 per bowl. Take 9 seconds each. So they do take a little bit of time. Uh, buckets, same kind of thing. It's a water transport thing, though. Um, so, you know, lots of good stuff like that. Um, let us see here. So we're going to make a little bit of oil shale in the fuel pump so you guys can see exactly what happens with that. So I'm just going to grab a stack of wood here. I'm going to grab a, a thing of the thing of the bowls there or the sap rather and the other one was coal so just do like that and we're gonna make ourselves a fuel log here actually how many do we need 10 I believe it was so they do take a little bit of time to make um, but anyway let's come right on over here to the pump and first off we're gonna do with wood so it's seven seconds and I'm sorry, it wasn't one oil shale, it's ten at a time. It's just like how when you take one oil shale, you get ten gas cans out of it. It's basically the same thing. So, is it worth it? I mean, it depends. I, I honestly feel like mining is a better, better play uh, for my style personally because I like the XP and with, you know, with this titanium auger, I can absolutely just shred through anything and everything with it without any issue at all uh, but coal here again seven seconds it takes 10 coal and you get 10 oil shale out of it and then as soon as the fuel logs are done it's the same thing seven seconds um, and again you get 10 out of it so you know as you can see I haven't really made much with it uh, like I said I kind of prefer I kind of prefer to mine it myself just because then I get the XP from the mining um, I like to level up quick on here to be to be honest uh, leveling up is like you know it gets me further along it gets me to the to the better stuff as you guys will see by my uh, skills here you know a pretty high pretty high level in a lot of stuff almost max athletics and automatic weapons there um, maxed in mining tool and miner 69er almost maxed in scavenger and I have quality Joe at five of five so and the crafting perks here are basically all maxed out as well with the exception of weapon and quicker crafting so take you guys through a look at my the rest of my skills here uh, better barter I love getting better barter up because you make more money the traders have better loot a good Didn't even hear her running up. And she screamed, so now we're going to have some fun here.
Where's the dog? Oh, there. Oh, those are spider zombies. Let them jump by. All right. Have to excuse the interruption. I have. Oh, I basically am set up to draw in screamers, by the way. And I'm doing that on purpose. Screamers seem to drop some really nice loot. So it's one thing I've been using to get uh, get a bunch of good loot as far as like selling goes. My iron mine has has torches everywhere, and I have an iron mine under my base, by the way, here. So my iron mine is just loaded with torches. I've been using it to draw the screamers in to farm them. Uh, so anyway, let's get back to the perks. Uh, so better barter five is great for great for at the trader. Uh, one one really good proof of the secret stash showing better loot is my first trip to the Wasteland Trader. They had a fusion forge. Now I did not buy it. It was seventy two thousand dukes, and I I was nowhere near being able to afford it at the time. If she had it now, I could buy it, but at the time I was nowhere near affording it uh, because I was I was there to buy brass. That was the only reason I actually went to the trader was to buy a bunch of brass for making shells. Uh, that's how I ended up fixing my brass problem was I bought, I think it was like nine 9,000 brass at, at that trader. She had just a ton. But anyway, that's one good proof of just how good this is. The Fusion Forge is like a level 125 or level 150 crafting item. So... It's way down the line, and she had it for sale, and it was only 72000 um, Anyway, the do-it-yourself perk is something I will be going into here. Um, I don't really think you actually need it, though, because it's... Um, I'm already making insulators. We can make electrical parts. So I don't know. It must come from, like, labor class or something as well. Uh, but anyway, electrical basics, of course, we have for the generators and... The relays, um, workbenches, of course, that's a really early game thing. Uh, coil gun crafting one, so I can start getting uh, coil batteries made. I'm going to start pumping them out because pretty soon here we'll be on coil gun crafting. Um, it's not going to take too long. I've started getting coil gun parts. Not as many as I would have expected, to be honest, though. That There is so absolutely so many different changes since the update it's it's nuts um i i don't even know where to start with them to be honest just the fact that um you know like loot drops from from the enemies i have found one ar receiver one m60 receiver so i'm not getting much for for that kind of stuff mastery books Okay, um, I found one labor class mastery, which I used, and I found three of the mechanic mastery ones, which I was already into mechanic mastery by the time I found them. But uh, that's another weird thing, was getting three of those in a row. Um, basically, right in the, it was actually in the same town, too. So that was kind of odd, considering up until that point, I had not found a mastery book. And then I found those three and the laborer one in the same town. And that's the only ones I've found so far. I've been all over the map looking for bookstores. Um, basically covered the whole west side of the map now. But anyway, let's keep going with the perks here. Uh, chem station, of course, because we weren't going into scientist right away. Uh, reloading weekly for the ammo. Now, most of these come from books, or rather the schematics you find. So basically when I find one that I would consider using, I just use it. Um, so quite a few of those have come from that. I think the only one I actually bought was AR. And yeah, I think that was it. Uh, I believe I believe I actually used the use the thing for the steel armor crafting. Um, I used the farming books. Um, because, of course, we want the snares and the chicken coops for getting eggs and meat and stuff like that. I think that's it for that. 
Now farming, living off the land is something I automatically uh, will max out. Uh, master farmer. I don't remember spending the skill, oh yeah I did. I don't know why I spent the skill points on that to be honest. I think I clicked on the wrong one or something. Yeah, I think I did. Uh, but we're in Master Farmer. Uh, Master Hunter we do not have. Labor is one of the books that we found. And as you can see, we got the Hammer and Forge all the way up. Because as soon as I was able to make Advanced Forges, I went right to it. Advanced Forges are well worth going into. They're well worth the steep steel cost. Because you don't need to feed them wood for them to run. They always run. And they don't require any power or any... Uh, fuel source to run as well um, Mechanic as you can see I have not gone into turret syndrome. I don't think the junk turrets are worth it um, In my opinion, I don't if you take mechanic class first Then the junk turrets might be worth it But at this point in the game I can spend my skill points on something a lot better and basically all the points that are already in like the tops of these skills are ones that you get from the quest minus the wasteland treasure that's my doing uh, lucky looter is something I maxed out as soon as I could for the now again it doesn't show it on the perk but you get a loot bag drop bonus um, so it basically increases the chance that you get a loot bag to drop from a from an enemy kill and I wanted that as soon as possible for getting the better stuff that they tend to carry uh, Master Scavenger is something I'm curious at at doing. Uh, it does give a 10% bonus from Wasteland Strike. This brings me to a point. Uh, door Recycling. You only get doorknobs from locked doors. And more specifically, the wooden doors that do not have the metal, the scrap metal sheet on them as well. So any wooden lock door with a brass handle on it that does not have a metal sheet on it is the only doors you get doorknobs from. Why? I have no idea. But it's kind of disappointing if we're getting brass. But once I figured it out, I knew what to hit up, and I still haven't really gone and hit them up because I got all that brass at the trader. Um, anyway, haven't put any points into scientists yet. Um, haven't put any points into here. I did put the points into Master Security, though, for the M60 and the Advanced Tactical Ring, also the Titanium Armor. So Master Security is a huge, huge class mastery for me. Um, survivalist, never put any points into that. Master Survivalist is something I will want to get for the large backpack. Um, we won't need the titanium machete because eventually we get a laser sword, which we actually should get. Um, we should actually get that when we go to the to the research lab. Now, technology I have not done. I have not had the luck of getting the technology uh, papers to drop, but. There is a very easy way to get them, which I will show you guys. Okay, it's not easy. It takes a lot of, uh, it does take a lot of time. It takes a lot of enemy killing to do, but I will show you guys an easy way to do that, or I'll call it easy, but you guys know what I mean. So with that in mind, that's going to do it for this episode. This is just to uh, give you guys a little sneak peek into how I like to build my base. Um, and exactly the reason why behind me doing all this stuff. Um, it's for future prep, and hopefully this will explain it to you guys enough, and also hopefully it gives you guys um, a little bit of tips for getting there yourself and what you guys should be expecting if you guys have not been that far into the game yet. So like I said, hopefully this helps you guys out, and it's like I said, it's mainly just a look so you guys get to see what... Um, and why I do stuff the way I do it. I have not worked on my horde base at all yet. I do have big plans for that, but I um, basically spent this whole time between horde nights getting a bunch of stuff done and getting uh, myself prepared for going into the wasteland. Um, 
getting my class mastery or my classes done, stuff like that. I do have plans to expand on this base big time, which will be coming soon. Uh, it will be coming after this Horde Night, though. But I do have huge plans for what I want to do with this base. So you guys will get to see that. Um, hopefully the Day 21 Horde. If not, it will be the Day 20, 28. So anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to see a little bit more of what I what I do in my off-camera playthrough and the reason for why. So if you guys are enjoying these videos, make sure you guys smash that like button for me. If you guys are liking the videos, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you trigger those notification bells so you guys never miss out on a video. Comment down below if you guys have any uh, questions, any tips and trips, tricks of your own that you guys like to use. I'm always interested to hear from you guys and I'm always here to help you guys out if you guys have any questions. So again, thank you guys so much for being here and we will catch you guys for the Horde Night video next.